Hello guys, this is Julia from Just One More Card and today let's create um, a really soft background with distress inks and do some really simple Copic coloring that really everybody can do. Like if you're a beginner, that's something that you can do as well. I'm going to be using the Polar Pals stamp and die set, but before I get started, I'm going to do some uh, distress inking. And what I want to do is I want to put this panel behind this frame, but I don't uh, want the coloring to go to the very edge of um, uh, my panel here because I will be foam mounting the frame and I don't want the color to peek out. I know that's me just overcomplicating everything. That's why I've masked off um, a really really s tiny sliver of the um, this panel so the color won't go to the very side. And now I'm going to create a really nice and soft blended background and I wanted to create like the impression of a very cold winter morning. To give you some context, the time that I created this, um, it was minus, what was it, minus 16 degrees Celsius here in Dresden, that's about 12 degrees Fahrenheit. It was really, really cold, um, and the mornings were like this, you had like a very soft uh, pinkish hue in the sky, but it was otherwise very blue and very cold. I'm also doing a lot of photography, so I was out for sunrise um, during those mornings, and that was very, very inspirational to see that. Then I actually dunked my fingers into some clean water that I had on my um, on my desk and just uh, spritzed the water onto this uh, cardstock. And you can see that it immediately starts to react with the watercolor. And then I used just a paper towel to uh, um, take it off. Um, and I have a really nice texture. So this just adds additional interest. And then I'm going to spritz it with my preferred mixture of Perfect Pearls and water just to add some shimmer. And of course, I'm going to dry this with my heat gun because I'm impatient. You can just let it dry on its own, but I'm impatient. So now when I peel this off, it's maybe even a little bit wonky, but doesn't matter. Um, but now when I foam mount this onto my panel uh, or the, if I foam mount the frame onto this panel, then the ink won't extend to the very sides. That's what I wanted. Okay, now that I've prepared all of that, I can actually start the coloring process. For stamping, I use the... Oh yeah, by the way, I always clean my stuff right away because I've had some questions about this. I have this Hero Arts scrubber thingy and the Hero Arts Ultra Clean that I use with all of my stamps. It's completely safe. I've been using it for years, like safe for the stamps. Um, takes off everything. I've even used like Stazon ink or archival ink. Um, and uh, it, I've never had any problems. Of course, like... I think like some of the Ranger dye inks or the Hero Arts dye inks, they do stain the stamps. So there's nothing that you can do about that. That's just a process, a chemical process that happens. But with the stamp scrubber, um, the Hero Arts Ultra Clean spray that I just spray onto the, um, the scrubber or the uh, Lawn Fawn chamois that I just have moistened with water, I usually clean all of my stamps and I've never had any issues. Um, for the Copic stamping, actually, I use the My Favorite Things Hybrid Ink, Licorice Ink. Uh, I usually don't like the hybrid inks so much because I feel that their colors are not quite as intense as the regular dye inks. Um, but the Licorice Hybrid Ink is perfect for coloring. It works with Copics, watercolors, pencil blending solution. So that's my go-to ink for any coloring projects. So while I've been waffling on, Sorry about that, um, but I just get some questions sometimes and I wanted to take the chance to address them. I've been doing my coloring here and it's very easy Copic coloring. It's basically blending from dark to light. That's all that I'm doing. Starting with a dark color, blending towards a light color. Um, and uh, I'm doing several layers and you can see here that I'm coming in with my darkest color now again. And um, just to intensify the shadows a bit, you can also see hopefully that I leave a tiny sliver of white to the left of, uh, of his front paws, for example, and to the left and top of his hind paws. And that is simply um, so there will be some differentiation um, uh, between those dark areas and other dark areas, because I already know that, for example, his front paws will cast a shadow to the left. And if I would not leave that light sliver of brightness to the left of those front paws, then they would be completely dark and bunch up against this dark area that I just colored and you would lose all definition. So even if this might not be like true to life, 
it makes the coloration look more pleasing. That's the only reason. I've actually picked this up from Sandy Alnack, who I've seen this do, and I, I try to remember this. I sometimes forget to do it like that. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's just paper and color, but I feel it just looks more pleasing. But the actual coloring process, again, is very simple. It's blending from dark to light. Starting with it, I'm, you know, usually going with a mid-tone color and draw in the darkest areas. Um, then I blend towards my lightest color, but I usually leave um, a white space just to have, I have some room to maneuver. And then I come back with my darkest color and blend towards the lightest color again. You know, darkest color via the mid-tone color towards the lightest color. So it's usually like two layers of colors that I use. And you can see here, I'm coming back with my darkest color and I'm intensifying the shadow areas. Because on Copic markers, when you go over a dark marker with a much lighter marker, then it will kind of um, take away some of the darkness. Um, and so on my second layer, I usually don't go over all the dark areas with my midtones. I only go over the edge of the dark colors with my midtones. Um, so I, uh, I don't take away all the darkness. I hope that makes sense. Really, I hope that makes sense. Like, in combination with watching me doing it, I hope that makes sense. And then for the um, for these uh, little elements, yeah, I decided to keep it very simple. Well, I actually wanted to keep it just to one color and then I couldn't, sorry. So I'm just coming in with another one and just adding a tiny little bit of uh, definition here to the side and then I'm blending towards the lightest color. I, I know I should keep it simple, but it's just, I mean, this is very easy. Everybody can do it. And you can see it looks already more interesting. Now for another element that I want to add to my card, I have this piece of cardstock here and I add a double-sided adhesive tape. Then I'm just pouring in this Nuvo Pure Sheen glitter um, very generously because I'll funnel all of it back into the jar. You basically don't use up anything. Just rubbing the glitter a bit so it will set and not come off. And then I'm going to be using the twine and bows uh, die cut from Pretty Pink Posh. And I'm just going to die cut this. And those guys of you who watched Babylon 5, you know, the sci-fi series, this looks like a shadow ship. I mean, seriously, when I was looking at it, I was like, this is basically a shadow ship. Sorry, <laughs> slightly off topic. So these are the dies that I used. And of course, they will be listed in the video description below as uh, like in the product listing. Or you can just, you know, ask me if I forgot to list it, because sometimes I do. Um, so those were the dies that I used to create all these die cuts here. So now I'm putting everything together. This is the piece where I did my watercolor background at the beginning. And I'm just gluing it on a panel that I had die cut that is a scalloped rectangular panel. I'm adding some foam adhesive to this frame and adding and gluing it down onto the watercolor um, panel. And now I'm using foam adhesive as well to put down, well, not put down, to adhere the polar bear to um, the watercolor background. So um, I've added some adhesive to the scallop rectangle and um, just made sure that I added tiny drops of Tombow Mono to this um, glitter die cut to my glitter shadow ship. They wouldn't have looked as menacing if they would have been pink in Babylon 5 instead of black. Um, anyhow, so here's a close-up of the coloring. Sorry, sometimes my mind works in really mysterious ways. Sometimes it scares me a little bit. Um, so here's the final card. Um, like I said, it's very, like, the stress, the stress ink blending is super easy. Everybody can do it. And blending from dark to light with your Copic markers is something that's absolutely basic that everybody can do. And you can see that you can create a wonderful card with, this easy, with these easy techniques. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.